Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to say thank you for being subscribed. My channel is continuing to grow. I'm over 1,100 subscribers. When I crossed that 1,000 mark and then it just continued to creep up, it just makes my heart so happy. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And thank you for sharing my channel with somebody else who you think might actually really enjoy it. All right, so favorites for the month of May. It's been kind of hard. Um, I think if you've watched any of my videos in the past couple of weeks, you realize there was a point where it was kind of like, ah, I'm not surviving quarantine. And I feel like things are finally getting better. The county that I live in, in Washington state, has been uh, has applied and been approved for phase two. So the beginning of June, we're gonna be moving into phase two where we can you know, get together in small groups of like five or less. Uh, salons will be open. I already have appointments for haircuts for all of us. <laughs> And um, we're, we're just, I feel like, you know, maybe it's okay to start spending time outside of these four walls. And that is probably my most favorite thing. I will also link for you right here um, a video where I talk about, like, basically the only makeup I'm wearing during quarantine is lip products. And there's a lot of lip products here, so I thought we'd start there. Um, I did a video this month on these guys. These are the Alme Color and Care Lip Oil and Stick Formulas. I really like these. My favorite one is this one here. This one is in the shade Pl uh, Sugar Plum because it is a little bit more colorful, but it's still very sheer, very soft. It's shiny, but it's, it's kind of, it's lightweight. It's lightweight. Um, it this color sticks around a lot longer. The other one I have here is in I think it's in Dulce de Leche, and this one here is basically sheer. <laughs> it looks like it's a color, but it's right here, and you can barely see it. There's a little bit of shine coming from this. It really doesn't give a lot of color on the lips. So this is one that I throw in my like sweatshirt pocket, in my hoodie pocket, or I'll put it in the pocket of my jeans. Just as far as I'm going around throughout the day, oh, I need a little something on my lips. My lips are feeling a little dry. I'll throw this on. I've been using this a lot for that. And on days that I want a little bit of color, I've used this. Here's the other thing. I don't allow my kids who are 10 and 12 to wear anything more than lip gloss right now, but I feel like this is so sheer, this shade right here, that we were all sitting together at the table the other day and one of them asked if they could use it. And I was like, it's lipstick, you can't use lipstick, not yet. And I said, well, okay, because her lips were dry and I understand that feeling of not wanting to have dry, cracked lips. And I said, here, just try it. And you could hardly tell, so it's not a lot of color. I have really liked both of these. Another one you've heard me talk about a lot is the M Cosmetics True Gloss in the shade Moroccan Sunset. Love this one so much. It is glossy, it's intense, and I like it for that reason. Another one I've used a lot this month. This was the one that I was using kind of as my everyday, all day, you know, until something else showed up. This is Lipstick Queen's Medieval. It's a very sheer red. It's kind of like if you were biting your lips, like maybe even like that. I always thought of this as like kind of like cherub lips, like those old paintings from Rococo times with cherubs, and they have these like pretty soft pink lips and you know cheeks. This is like that just bitten lip, but not too much. Love that. And then, oh, I did something. I said I wasn't gonna do, which was buy makeup during quarantine, but I did. And I got these products here from Beautylish from the new Wayne Goss launch. And I, I got five, but these are the four that I have been using nonstop. And I have sharpened this so many times. This has been sharpened and it's down to a nub again. This is the liner I'm wearing today. It's the Essential Lip Liner in the shade Mauve. And I was worried because choosing a color, I wanted one that was nude, not too dark, not too light. And this is beautiful because it's nude and it's slightly pink based, but it has enough depth to it that it really does help to, um, I like this a lot. I think it's great. And the formula where it's not too creamy and soft and it's not too hard, uh, it stays where you put it and it really does help to define like just the outside edge of my lip. Where now that I'm losing some volume in my mid 40s, my lips aren't as plump and as big as they used to be. This does kind of help to settle exactly where I want my lip line to be and it still looks natural. Love this. 
The one gloss that I have been using a lot, and you can see I've been in here a lot, is the shade Plum Blossom. Oh my goodness, this one's just gorgeous. It's more of a peachy gloss. It's right here. It's very shiny. It doesn't have any sparkle to it, so I would call this more of a cream finish, meaning there's no shine or shimmer to it, but it is very shiny, and you can add it on top of lipstick. Like if I were to just tap this right on top here, it would give that illusion of a fuller lower lip. It does have a subtle mint kind of scent and a, a mild, the most mild tingling. I love that. It works well over any shade of lipstick. I've used it over darker lipsticks, over lighter lipsticks, um, but I love the shade and even on its own, it's just gorgeous. Now, both of these lipsticks right here, one is my new favorite. Like, I've worn it almost every day since I got it in mid-May, and I'm absolutely in love. But let me show you the other one first. The other one is called Lily. It's a very beautiful kind of pink-leaning nude. And the formula is fantastic. It's a cream formula, it's gorgeous. But my favorite is this one. It's the darkest shade that Wayne developed for the launch of these. And it's this one right here, it's called Zinnia. Now he's not a red lipstick fan, and I am, but I wanted the darkest one he made, and it was this one. And this is one that I can put on my lips and then grab a little bit of what's on my lips and like tap it onto my cheeks on no makeup days. And then I have like a little flush going on here and a nice glossy, comfortable, nurturing feeling on the lips. These are all the lipsticks that I have been wearing this month. And I wear a shade every day, even if I don't wear any other makeup. There's been so many days this month where it's been nothing but a lip product. And these are the ones that I've been grabbing for. Love these. So on the days that I wanna wear more than just a lip product, the first thing I reach for is this. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Vanish. I have the shade One Fair, and this is basically a peach corrector um, that when you tap it on the dark spots in your under eyes, you can hardly see it here. It does have kind of a slight peachy cast to it. It helps to neutralize the darkness here. Now, you can still see, I still have some darkness, so it doesn't get rid of everything. It's not heavy. It is creamy, slightly emollient, but not in a greasy, bad way. Just enough that it doesn't accentuate any dryness or crepiness you have going on under your eye, and as a 45-year-old, I definitely have that going on. But I like that it's hydrating and emollient without being greasy. And there are days that I'll wear just this, and just this and call it a day. So if I wanna do more than that, I have been loving two things for the face. One is this, I can't get over this. Like these M Cosmetics products that I purchased, lip gloss and this blush, this is called Magic Hour. It's the Heaven's Glow blush and the shade is Magic Hour. There's a slight sheen. Can you see the slight sheen to this? You can wear this on its own and you don't need any highlight on a really soft, almost no makeup day and I love it for that but I have been wearing this shade a lot, and then I have been topping it with an, I, I, I forgot about it in my collection, but it's a Super Shock highlight from ColourPop, and it's in this shade, stole the show, and you can see I have some pan here, some baby pan. I absolutely love this product. So it's kind of like a white highlight with a little bit of a gold undertone to it. And I use it with my fingers usually, because on the days that I'm, wearing nearly nothing, it's really easy. And, and here it is, it's, it's just kind of, you know, you rub it out and you get kind of like a slight sheen. There's no glitter, there's no shimmer, there's just a softness and a shine to it. And it doesn't look chunky, it looks really pretty. And it's what I have going on here. And I love this so, so, so much. It's easy to reapply if you feel like you need a little bit more. I also have been loving it using a duo fiber brush. I'll just do this and then just kind of tap it where I want it and then blend it in. And you can really take this, you know, above and beyond its soft kind of more natural look to kind of a wet and glossy look. This will take you to that spot. You just have to keep layering it on, but I like the soft shine that it gives without being glittery and I forgot how good these were, but some of them are more glittery than others. Some of them specifically have glitter chunks in them, and I like that this one doesn't, and I love it so much for that. It's also 
it has some warmth from the gold, but it's it's perfect for my skin tone. Uh, sometimes the ones that look at they're more of a white highlight, they're a little too icy and a little too cool. And this one has some warmth with the gold in there. It's just gorgeous, love it. Quarantine has been, um, I've been hard pressed to put anything on other than lip products and my little cheat of whatever's on my lips, I'll tap on my cheeks too. But on the days that I want more than that, it's literally these three products that I've been reaching for and I have been loving them for that. But let's talk about some non-makeup items that have been amazing. I love listening to audiobooks as I'm making dinner, as I'm doing housework, as I'm going on a walk, as I'm doing something where I'm by myself but I want a little company. An audiobook is a great way to kind of take care of that. And so I found out that my local library lends audiobooks for free through an app called Libby. So I have that app on my phone and I can borrow an audiobook for up to two weeks. And I've been listening to like a whole bunch of stuff. I just finished listening to a couple of nonfiction. I listened to Michelle Obama's Becoming. I listened to, oddly enough, there was one Malcolm Gladwell uh, book that I had not read and it was David and Goliath. So I listened to that. That was fun. Um, I just downloaded three new ones today, but I don't I haven't started them, so I can't tell you whether they're good or not. But I've also loved, um, for years, I just would use regular earbuds, like the really inexpensive, cheapy ones that don't have good audio quality because I ruin and lose earbuds like nobody's business. But my husband found these little guys. These are, I'll have to leave it in the description down below, but he found them on Amazon. They were on sale. They come in their own little box where you put them in there and they charge. And I'm sure everybody knows about this. I had no idea that little Bluetooth earbuds could be so comfortable and so easy to wear and stay charged for so long and there would be no cord. And I can leave my device on the counter and I can walk and you know start the laundry up and go over here and you know go cut some herbs from the garden. It's like been a revelation to me. I love these guys. They're so great. All right, now when I do sit down and I've been really listening to a lot of audiobooks, but when I decide I wanna watch something, I have been loving three different shows. So the two that I have been loving that are more in that reality TV, one is called Making the Cut, it's on Amazon Prime, and it's kind of like the grown up version of Project Runway, because you have Heidi Klum and you have Tim Gunn, and I always love Project Runway, um, but I didn't always like the, backbiting and the um, kind of putting people down or some of you know that workroom tension that comes in and I feel like for at first it was it's natural to have that happen and then it kind of moved into the farther along you got the more they were looking for people who, to cast people who might be difficult that way and I don't like that uh, aspect of myself when I get a little uh, backbitey and snippy but I also don't want to see it on TV to have it kind of be reinforced in myself. So I like that in this, everybody was so kind. They were supportive. They helped their castmates out when somebody needed a hand. There was a little bit of, you know, and I think it was more stress and tension other than somebody who's really catty and snippy on purpose. But I loved it because they said, this is a design show. It's not a sewing show. It's not how good of a seamstress are you. It's what are your ideas like? So they actually give them seamstresses if they can cut out patterns and pick the material and design everything, uh, they can leave it all in a container and give it to a seamstress who overnight will put it together for them. And then they just have to do the finishing touches. And I don't know anything at all about the design industry and the fashion industry, but it's interesting to see this other side of it where you have this idea and you can sketch out this gorgeous thing, but then you work with pattern makers and you work with seamstresses and you work with tailors and you work with other people uh, to create maybe a fabric print things that are specifically, you have this vision in your mind and a whole team of people help bring it together. And that's what the show Making the Cut is about. And I like whizzed through it and I loved it, but it's because I always love Project Runway too. All right, the other one that I have loved is a show called Songland. It's on NBC. What I love so much about Songland is that it comes from a songwriter's perspective and you have three producers in there, very famous producers. Um, and you've got a pop producer, an R&B producer, and a country producer, and then they bring in an artist. And sometimes it's a single person, sometimes it's a group. And then they bring in four different songwriters who've never had an opportunity to pitch to like a major artist 
or at a major label, they're kind of like, this is their first go of like they've been trying and they're, they're really trying to make a go of it. And they choose out of those four, they choose three songwriters to move on to work with a the producer. They completely rework the the song, whether it's the lyrics, whether it's the melody, whether it's the production value, they change everything to suit the artist who's looking for a song. And at the end of the day, that artist, that huge big name artist, walks out with a new song. It's amazing. So I think the reason that I love it even more is that I used to work in radio. I spent 21 years working in radio and I was the program director of a network of stations. Um, and one of our stations was like a really big deal in a large-ish mid-sized market. And we had a real nice in with uh, the record labels in Nashville. And I would go to Nashville regularly. Um, I would be taken on press junkets. Um, you know, somebody's having a concert in New York. They want you to come. They fly you out. Oh, they're spending the day at Six Flags in California. You want to come and spend the day riding roller coasters? Yes. And so you go and you do that. Uh, you want to go and have dinner one-on-one -on -one with this big artist. So it wasn't just me and like 80 other people. Sometimes it was just me and the artist or me and the artist and their rep from the label. Um, and I, I heard a lot about the songwriting aspect of it. I heard a lot about the work in progress when they're working on, a, on an album, the collaboration process. And I met a lot of people who have that really incredible ability to create collaboratively, which is why I love this show so much. So if you are a music person and you love the creative process, it's great to see a whole bunch of people kind of come together and just bounce ideas off of each other. It's so much fun to watch. And the one network show that I've been loving that's kind of like a dramedy, and I kind of discovered it late, is The Rookie, and it has Nathan Fillion in it. And I have known and loved Nathan, Nathan Fillion since Firefly. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that show, but I love that show. It's like Cowboys in Space. It's amazing. And then I loved him in Castle. I watched Castle for years. And when I realized that he had started a whole nother um, kind of dramedy where it's a little bit drama, a little bit comedy, it's really fun, but it's kind of like a police procedural. Not really so much procedural. Maybe it's like set in a police station in Los Angeles and he's the oldest rookie. <laughs> he's in his mid 40s and he's up against some young 20s who are just, you know, they're all right out of police academy and he, he comes into it after divorce. So it's funny, his kind of more adult take on it. Sometimes they give him uh, some fuss because he's older and they call him the old man. But it's classic Nathan, charming, funny, heartwarming. And I really, I thought it was fun. So if you're looking for a TV show to watch where you get both some laughs as well as some drama, I think you might enjoy The Rookie. One of the other things that has been great for me this month, I, and I told you earlier, I've been really stressed. I've been dealing with a lot of uncertainty and kind of feeling, oh, I'm not okay. <laughs> um, I discovered something my husband recommended that I check out this app called Headspace. Now Headspace is a meditation app and it's mindfulness. Meditation, yes, but more just the idea of are you present where you are? Are you aware of what your body is doing or what is causing you to be stressed out? And how can we acknowledge some of those things so that you're not so stressed out by it? And I absolutely love it. I haven't subscribed yet because they do have a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription. You save more if you get the yearly subscription, but it's like 70 bucks. And I'm kind of like, do I need it? But they do have some free meditations on there that you know take three minutes, some that take one minute, some that take 10 minutes. I went on a walk this morning with my little earbuds and I was listening to one that was meant to help kind of de-stress as you're walking. And it was great and I feel like I've gotten a really great start to my day and I'm less anxious and I'm in a better headspace. So I think that Headspace is a great app and I will um, leave a link for it down below. So there you go. Those are the things I've been loving. Um, I think that there's been minimal makeup um, but there's been a lot more other things that have been making a difference and um, kids school almost being over and my county here in the state of Washington going into the second phase. That just means that the virus is kind of subsiding where we live and I, I like hearing that. And then beyond that, um, just the little things that are making my day better. 
Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being subscribed. Let me know what your favorites were for this month. It doesn't have to be makeup, it can be anything at all. If you have a favorite iced tea recipe, let me know down below. If you have a favorite item that you've been baking a lot, let me know down below. Whatever it is that you've been loving and doing, let me know in the comments down below. Have an amazing day. I'll see you again soon. Bye.